So with higher inflation still affecting the prices of most things we buy, if you're keeping your cash in any plain old national bank account, then you could be making a huge mistake and losing money because of it. That's because those big well-known banks are paying out interest at the bare minimum for what are supposed to be savings accounts. But when you're only earning as little as maybe 0.01% or slightly more if you're lucky, those savings you have are losing purchasing power quickly. To make things worse, many of these bank accounts also have minimum deposit requirements and hidden fees. And what I've found is that many times people stick with these same outdated bank accounts they've had for years just because it seems like a lot of work to find and open a new one. But with this video, I wanna make it easy for you to switch and start earning anywhere from 3.4 to over 4% APY with the six best bank accounts and other high yield accounts of 2023. And all the accounts in this video have no minimums or fees, which is the way it should be. So let's just get right into the content here with the first bank account, which is one of my personal favorites that I've been using for a while now. And that is the SoFi checking and savings account. Now SoFi officially became a bank last year and their checking and savings product has consistently been one of the best out there when it comes to features and higher paying rates. So we'll get into the features next, but right now you can earn up to 3.75% APY with of course, no account fees or minimum balances. Now, when you open up a SoFi online bank account that comes with both a checking and a savings account that'll be open for you at the same time. But to get that 3.75% rate, the catch is that first you need to set up direct deposit. And after that, then you'll earn 3.75% in your savings account, but only 2.5% in your checking account. Now, those are great rates for both checking and savings accounts when you compare them to other similar accounts on the market. And you can easily move money back and forth with no limits on withdrawals and transfers between those two SoFi bank accounts. But the reason you need to set up direct deposit is that basically they wanna have you using SoFi as your primary bank account so that you'll consistently have cash coming in every single month from something like your paycheck. If you don't have direct deposit with SoFi, then you'll only get 1.2% APY in both checking and savings. So just be aware of that if you wanna be earning those higher rates that SoFi advertises. So I personally do not get biweekly paychecks with direct deposit, so I'm only getting that 1.2% rate, but 1.2% with SoFi checking is still better than pretty much any other checking account out there anyway, so I'm fine with using them as my main checking account. Also, I gotta quickly mention that even though the numbers in this video are gonna be accurate as of the filming of this video in late February, 2023, interest rates change over time, so these numbers can go up and down. But just know that regardless of those changes over time, the accounts in this video have consistently been offering the best paying rates anyway. Now, in addition to high APYs and no fees or minimums, SoFi also offers access to over 55,000 fee-free ATMs within the AllPoint network where you can withdraw cash from your account. Plus, you can get your paycheck up to two days early and have overdraft protection of up to $50. But early paycheck and overdraft protection do require direct deposit to be set up as well. So if I had to give one negative that limits SoFi just a little bit, it would be that they require direct deposit to be set up to unlock the account's full potential. Another useful feature is the ability to add vaults within the savings account portion of your SoFi account. And vaults are a great way for you to set aside money for different purposes or savings goals like a travel fund or an emergency fund. And those balances within each vault are also eligible for that 3.75% APY since they fall under your savings. Now, one other feature that I really like about SoFi and their app that not many other banks have is called Insights, where basically I can link and track all my finances in one place. So with Quick Lance, I can see things like my spending, my net worth, and my credit score. And it's not the only way I track these things personally, but it's still a really convenient feature that definitely helps and encourages me to stay on top of my money. Also, right now, SoFi is offering a sign-up bonus for their online bank account where you can receive between $50 and $250, depending on direct deposit amounts that you have over a certain time frame. So I'll leave a link for that down below where you can learn more about this account if you're interested because not all high-yield accounts offer a sign-up bonus. Now, I also wanna mention that because this is an online-only account, you don't have branch locations or as many convenient ways to deposit actual paper for money. And this could be a similar issue for many other online bank accounts in this video too. But the main way to fund a high yield savings account is usually gonna be to transfer directly from something like a checking account. So I don't really view this as a big issue for me personally. If you're using SoFi's checking account and you do need to deposit paper cash on a regular basis, you can still do that. But you'll have to search in the app for an eligible retailer like 7-Eleven, CVS, or Walgreens and then pay a small fee to deposit that cash. So just be aware of that. So for many people that'll set up direct deposit and don't need to deposit actual cash, I I think SoFi has a great bank account with a ton of useful features and a high APY with their checking and savings product. But if you don't like what they offer from being online only, then this next bank account could be a better option for you. And that is the Capital One 360 Performance Savings Account. Now, Capital One is one of the few larger national banks that made this list because I actually think they offer sort of the best of both worlds when it comes to online banking and traditional in-person banking. Their 360 savings account has an APY of 3.4% with of course, no fees or minimums, but they still offer traditional traditional in-person
in-person banking if you need something like that for cash deposits or other products and services that Capital One offers. Plus, they've got some cool Capital One cafes that I've been to once or twice that are really unique ways to approach banking, which kind of goes along with the whole banking reimagined thing they say in their commercials. The 360 savings account also offers the ability to set up automatic transfers to the account, which is always nice if you wanna do that. And even though you don't have a feature like SoFi's vaults, Capital One does say on their website that you can create multiple savings accounts for each one of your financial goals. So you can always do that, but I kind of wish they offered a feature like SoFi vaults because I always like having my savings organized under one account personally. Now I'd say that other than those things, there's not much else to mention here because it's a pretty basic high yield savings account. And Capital One does also offer a 360 checking account that you could pair with this. But honestly, there's not that many features in that checking account that sort of stick out to me other than the basics, like no fees or minimums, access to over 70,000 fee-free ATMs, up to two day early paychecks and a pretty low 0.1% APY on checking balances. So definitely do not keep any extra cash in their checking account. Just put it in the savings account instead with that much higher 3.4% APY. I also think that the Capital One app is nice and much more user-friendly with managing all your Capital One accounts in a single place compared to what some other larger national banks offer. So these Capital One bank accounts, especially that 360 savings account could be the right fit for you if you value having a simple experience with a high APY and that option for in-person banking. But their checking account is pretty basic if you wanna pair that with the high yield savings account. Then next for bank account number three in this list, we're gonna go back over to another online only bank account that really led the way with online banking over the past few years. And that is going to be Ally Bank with their online savings account. Now Ally has been famous in the online high yield savings world for a while and really became popular with the rates they pay and some of the other cool features they have, which we'll get into here. But with Ally right now, they're currently paying a 3.4% APY in their savings account, which is the exact same as Capital One. So both Capital One and Ally at 3.4%, fall just slightly under the SoFi savings account, which currently is our highest interest rate in this video at 3.75% if you set up direct deposit with SoFi. Then with Ally, you get the same no monthly maintenance fees or minimum balance requirements, which like I said before, is such an important thing to look out for. And then you've also got a buckets feature that'll help you with breaking up your savings that you have in this account into basically smaller sub accounts that you can set targets and goals for. So that's similar to vaults with SoFi. And I think these are great features for helping customers to really visualize what their savings are going towards. Then Ally also advertises what they call boosters. And these are a nice little add-on, but nothing too special. So you can set up recurrent transfers, which is good for automating your savings that you move over into your Ally savings account. And then there's also a roundup booster where you can have a linked Ally checking account that'll round up all your purchases you make through that account to the nearest dollar and move it over to the savings account. But that would only happen if you're using a debit card for spending. And here on my channel, I like to always think that it's much better to use a credit card over a debit card and then just pay off that credit card in full every single month. Now, if you do want to open and then pair a checking account with Ally to go along with their savings account. Right now they offer an interest checking product where you can earn 0.25% APY, which isn't great compared to a savings account, but it's still better than nothing compared to other checking accounts with larger national banks out there, like you can see from this comparison on their website. But for this video, Ally checking still falls short of even the bare minimum that you can get with SoFi, because like I said earlier, I'm getting 1.2% in my SoFi checking account, even without direct deposit. Now Ally checking also offers spending buckets, which are similar to those savings buckets. And I think this is one of the most useful features out of any checking accounts out there because it can be really good for helping customers to set and then stick to their budgets every single month by giving you a clear picture of your spending habits. Plus you get the standard checking features like no fees or minimums, getting paid up to two days early with direct deposit and access to over 43,000 all point ATMs. And with ATMs, you can get reimbursed for up to $10 per statement cycle for fees charged at other ATMs outside of the network, which is a nice bonus feature that I like. So overall, I think Ally has a nice, simple, high yield savings account with a useful buckets feature that pairs really well with a good checking product that also has spending buckets. So if you don't mind having no in-person banking and you're looking for a good interest rate with some additional features, then Ally is a nice, reliable option. All right, moving on to account number four, and I'm only saying account here because this is technically not a bank account, but instead it's a cash account with a lot of similar features that combine some of the best benefits of different checking and savings accounts out there. So that is going to be Wealthfront Cash. Now I've mentioned Wealthfront Cash in some previous videos here on my channel because I'm a big fan of them myself. And the main reason it's on this list is because it offers the highest APY out of all the accounts in this video at currently 4.05% as I'm filming this. So on their website, you can see that they advertise they have a rate that towers over most banks, but then they also say not quite a bank, quite a bit better. And because they're a cash management account, they basically partner with other banks out there who then hold your deposits. And then Wealthfront is able to offer things like more features and a higher APY on their platform. So this account has zero fees, unlimited fee-free transfers,
offers no minimum or maximum to earn that 4.05% rate, access to funds earlier with direct deposit, over 19,000 fee-free ATMs, and normally bank accounts like all the other ones in this video offer up to $250,000 in FDIC insurance. But the way the Wealthfront Cash account works with those multiple partner banks, they're able to offer up to that $2 million. They've also got a feature that's similar to vaults with SoFi and buckets with Ally called categories. And this is the same type of thing you'd expect where you basically create all these categories that fall under your Wealthfront Cash account that you can set up for different savings goals. Now, I think their app is personally my favorite out of all the other accounts in this video, just because of how clean and simple it is. And like SoFi, you can also link other external accounts or add assets and liabilities manually to track your wealth and your net worth over time, which is a cool feature. Plus, you can even set up transfers over to a Wealthfront investment account so you can invest your money and grow it over the long term. Now, a few negatives here with Wealthfront Cash will be that first of all, you can't really make cash deposits, so you're gonna have to transfer in money from other accounts or receive direct deposits. And also, there's gonna be limitations when it comes to sending and depositing checks. So with most bank accounts out there, like the other ones in this video, you can order checks if you need to use them. But with Wealthfront Cash, you have the ability for Wealthfront to send a check for you. Now that feature is good enough for most people, but you can only have them send checks for you if the address is in the United States. And also to unlock this feature, you have to first have direct deposits of at least $250, and you also have to have an average balance of at least $2,500 across all your Wealthfront accounts for at least 60 days. Depositing checks also requires those same requirements for a direct deposit and those average balances. So this can be a few annoying hoops to jump through, but Wealthfront does say that these are all requirements for security purposes that are meant to deter fraudsters. And they also say that they're working to make access easier. So those are just a few small negatives to keep in mind with an account that otherwise I'm still a big fan of. So if you want the highest APY out of all the accounts in this video, you plan to hold a lot of cash and want that higher FDIC coverage, and you like having a simple and clean app interface to track your finances, then the Wealthfront Cash account is a great one to check out. Next, moving on to account number five, which is another strong online high yield bank account with another well-known name, and that is the Discover Online Savings Account. Now Discover is offering a 3.5% APY, which puts it just slightly above Capital One and Ally. And the cool thing on Discover's website is that you can compare Discover to some of those other accounts out there like those, and then you can see what you'll earn in interest every single year. So outside of that competitive 3.5% APY, Discover Savings Account is pretty basic with no fees or minimum balances, but not too many other features other than receiving paychecks with direct deposit up to two days early. But I wanted to include them on my list of the best bank accounts again this year, because in addition to this account for savings, you can also look into their checking account, which offers a very rare feature of getting 1% cash back on up to $3,000 in debit card purchases each month. And not many other checking accounts offer this type of feature. Now that 1% cash back debit card checking account is actually sort of on pause right now because it rolled out last year. And then I guess Discover experienced large amounts of fraud. So they decided they were going to stop taking new applications for a while. And then they're going to relaunch in 2023 with more advanced capabilities. Now I'll personally always be using my credit cards to get better than 1% back. But for anyone out there that either hates credit cards or just can't get approved for one, this Discover checking and savings combination is definitely going to be pretty good to check out once everything is live again with that checking account. And then with that checking account, you're also going to get a bunch of other standard features like having access to over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. And of course, no fees over there as well. Discover also has the Discover It credit card, which is one of the best no annual fee cashback credit cards ever created that I've talked about in other videos. So if you want to combine together a high APY savings account with a cashback debit and maybe even a cashback credit card, then Discover is a nice, simple option for anyone to take advantage of. Now, lastly, in this video for bank account number six, I've got one of the best checking accounts out there that not enough people know about, but heavy travelers have been getting a ton of value from this account. So I'll explain why. And that is the Charles Schwab investor checking account. So this used to be called a high yield account, but recently Schwab decided to change that name and remove the high yield part because obviously it's not high yield at only 0.45% APY for checking balances. But honestly, that's not too bad when you compare it to some of the other checking accounts out there, like the 360 checking account from Capital One at 0.1% or Ally checking at 0.25%. So with Schwab investor checking, you're going to have no fees or minimums, but the most important features come with how you can actually use the debit card that's linked to this account because with that card, you're going to have no foreign transaction fees and you also get unlimited ATM fee rebates worldwide, which is why travelers love this account. Basically, anytime you need to withdraw cash, all you've got to do is just use the Schwab investor checking debit card and they're going to give you a refund at the end of the month for any ATM fees you might have had. So for me, I really wish I had this debit card before, especially in college because I would pay in cash for things all the time and I would use ATMs that charge me five bucks every time I took out cash. So this account could have saved me hundreds of dollars in fees over my four years in school. Other than that feature, this 
this account is gonna be pretty basic as well with no fees or account minimums. And when you open this investor checking account, it's also gonna have you open and then link a Schwab brokerage account. And you can use that brokerage account if you want to because Schwab does offer some good services there as well. But personally, I would take advantage of the ATM fee reimbursement feature with their checking account when I'm out traveling and taking out cash. And then I would pair that with a different high yield savings account where I would hold most of my cash savings to get a better paying interest rate. Now, if you're trying to increase your savings so that then you'll have more money to set aside in one of the best bank accounts in this video, one of the best things you can do is to create some sort of a budget to track and then cut back on your spending. And this is something that I used to have a really hard time doing, but then I created a simple budgeting template that's helped me out a ton to the point where now I actually save over 60% of my income every single month. So if you wanna see how I budget to save money and then get a free download to that template, then make sure you go ahead and check out this video over here next. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.